You ever get hooked on a mystery? One that just digs in and won't let go? Oh yeah, I know the feeling. That's the level land UFO thing for me, honestly. We're going way back 1950s, yeah. small town Texas. But what happened there, it still gets to people. It's a classic, and for good reason. Multiple witnesses, all these weird effects on cars, level of like the blueprint for a UFO encounter. Exactly. And you all know our listeners, you guys sent in tons of requests to really dig into this one. So no intro needed, right? Let's dive in. 1957, Levelin, Texas. What's the scene? What's this town all about before things get weird? Levelin in 57. Picture about the furthest thing from Roswell, from Area 51. Quiet farming community, <laughs> small, rural the kind of place where the most exciting thing was probably which farm had the best crops that year. And then November 2nd happens, Saturday night. Life in Levelin changes, all from some strange lights in the sky. Right. But these weren't your usual blinking light in the distance reports. People were calling in, describing something truly unusual, something big. And it wasn't just a handful of folks, was it? I remember reading about this. It felt like the whole town saw this thing. That's the thing about Leveland. It wasn't just one or two people. Dozens of separate accounts, completely independent, all saying they saw something incredible in the sky. So what were they seeing? Details, please. What's the picture we should be getting in our heads? Picture a huge egg-shaped thing, glowing, blindingly bright, moving slowly, deliberately across the sky. That's the consistent image you get from all these different people. And these weren't UFO buffs or anything, just everyday people farmers, families, even a police officer. Oh, wow. A police officer, too. You know, that adds a whole other layer when someone whose job it is to be skeptical, even they're reporting this. Absolutely. There's this feeling of awe in the stories, right? Reading those accounts, you can almost feel it. Totally. Some people were just awestruck by the sheer size of it, the brightness. Others, though, you, you can tell they felt uneasy, like something was off, something they couldn't explain. And that's before we even get to the stories about their cars going haywire. Ah, yes. Yeah. The vehicle malfunctions. That's where things get really interesting. Because, okay, you've got this giant glowing egg in the sky. Strange, but still, you could chalk it up to something explainable, right? But then people's cars start dying. That's too weird. What were they saying? What was happening? Multiple people. Again, completely separate. They said their cars were going nuts as this thing got close. Engines dying, lights going haywire. Some even said their radios cut out. See, this is what gets me. If it was just lights in the sky, okay, fine, maybe. But when you start messing with my car, that's different. Do other UFO cases have that, the whole car thing? Or is Leveland unique in that sense? That's a fantastic question, and it's something we'll definitely be diving into later on. Because you're right, it's more than just a visual thing. This vehicle factor, it pops up in other famous UFO encounters, too. Oh, yeah, it's a common thread. But for now, let's stick with Leveland. So we've got this massive glowing egg shutting down car engines all over town. What did the authorities make of all of this? Did anyone figure out what was going on? Now, that is where the story takes another turn. The police, of course, they were bombarded with calls. But it wasn't just local law enforcement. The Air Force got involved in the investigation, too. The Air Force? Wow. OK, so this was taken seriously right from the start. They must have had some kind of explanation for all of this, right? I mean, they'd have the radar and everything to track things in the sky. You think so, wouldn't you? That's what's so interesting about this whole level land situation. Even with the official investigations, there's no clear answer. Some tried to say it was just weather misidentified. Weather? Like what? They thought a few storm clouds were making car engines stall. Well, there was talk about ball lightning, meteor showers, strange atmospheric conditions, stuff like that. But even back then, a lot of people weren't buying it. How do you explain away a meteor shower that causes widespread electrical failure in vehicles? Doesn't really add up. Right. Ball lightning over an entire town, shutting everything down. It sounds like something people would make up to explain the unexplainable. Exactly. And even the official reports, you can tell they're trying to explain things away, but they still admit Something weird happened in Level in that night. Even they couldn't totally dismiss it. Cue the music. Cue the spooky sound effects. It's theory time. Uh -huh. You know everyone loves a good theory. It's human nature, right? When there's no easy answer, we start connecting the dots ourselves, right. looking for patterns, possibilities. Exactly. It's way more fun to speculate. So what are we talking about here? Lay it on us. What are some of the top theories about what really happened in Leveland? Well, you've got your classic UFO explanations natural phenomena, some kind of secret government tech, and of course the one everyone jumps to, aliens. All right, let's break those down a bit. 
starting with the natural side of things. Is there anything that could explain what people saw and what happened to their cars? People have tried to connect level land to things like weird meteor showers or maybe some freak electrical storms. There's even a thing called earth lights, which are these unexplained glowing events, sometimes linked to earthquakes. Earth lights? Never heard of those. Yeah, it's a bit out there, I'll admit. But it shows how when the normal answers don't fit, people get creative. The problem is none of these really explain the car thing, the malfunctions. That's true. And it wasn't just like one or two cars having a bad day. This was a town-wide electrical problem seemingly out of nowhere. Exactly. Which is how we get to the next idea, the whole secret government tech angle. Maybe, just maybe, this wasn't aliens. What if it was something the U.S. government was testing? Some super secret aircraft or technology. Okay, yeah, I've heard about this one. Like, maybe some early prototype of a stealth bomber or something? Right, something like that. And there are definitely folks out there who find this theory believable, especially with how secretive the government can be about military projects. They don't exactly advertise everything they're working on. That's fair, yeah. But if it was top secret stuff, wouldn't they have just, like, denied everything? Why even admit something weird was going on? Right, it's a good point. If this was their big project, you'd think they'd cover it up better than just some vague talk about the weather. Which brings us, naturally, to the theory everyone secretly wants to believe. Aliens. Ha ha, exactly. You say level land, people think UFOs. As they should. It's almost like it was designed to make people think about aliens. No explanation, weird tech messing with our world. <laughs> it's perfect for that kind of story. It really is. And what I like about the research you sent over is that it presents all these theories, but it doesn't try to tell you what to believe. Yeah, which is really refreshing, honestly. No agenda, no one shouting about conspiracies, just laying out the possibilities. But speaking of possibilities, you mentioned before that this whole car thing, the electrical stuff, it's a pattern with UFO sightings, right? Other cases have that too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave us hanging. Tell us more about that. You're right to focus on that. It's one of the biggest mysteries of the Little Land case but it also connects it to this whole web of UFO encounters from all over the world. A web, a tapestry, I like that. Like, each case is its own thread, but they're all connected somehow. So what are some of these other threads? Give us some examples. Well, one that comes to mind is the Westall incident. Happened in Australia back in 1966. Hundreds of school kids, teachers, all of them saw this weird, silent object come down from the sky and land in a field nearby. And guess what? Cars went haywire. You got it. Mm -hmm. People reported their cars stalling, electronics going crazy. All of this thing was flying overhead. Hundreds of people seeing this. That's not just some small town story. Schools don't just stop classes because someone saw a weird cloud. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And just like Leveland, Westall had these weird car problems. Like, yeah. whatever this thing was, it wasn't just something you saw. It was messing with how things worked. You know? An electromagnetic pulse or something. People say that, yeah, and it makes you wonder. And if we jump continents, fast forward a few decades, there's Rendlesham Forest. Okay, that one I have heard of. Wasn't that the one with, like, a military base and strange lights in the woods? What Spooky. Are, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. RAF Woodbridge. It was a U.S. and U.K. base together back in 1980. And again, you've got military guys, trained observers, freaking out about these lights. And guess what they reported? Cars going haywire, equipment going out. Don't tell me. Let me guess. Bingo. It's like this vehicle thing is the common denominator in some of the most famous UFO cases. Makes you think, right? It does. Because, yeah, one person says they saw a light. Okay, sure, whatever. But when you've got multiple cases all over the world and cars are going nuts, you got to wonder if there's something more to it. Something we just don't understand. Exactly. And that's why Level Land is so important, I think. It was one of the first big cases where this whole car thing came up. It made people really question things, made them think, maybe we don't have all the answers. It's like it opened up this whole new way of thinking about UFOs. Before that, it was all science fiction, right? But when a whole town has the same experience, well, you can't just ignore that. And it wasn't just Leveland, right? Westall, Rendlesham, all these other cases, they all add to this big pile of evidence that says something strange is happening up there. And we don't know what it is. I've always loved a good mystery, you know, but what gets me about Leveland is how normal it all was right up until it wasn't. Just another night in small town America and then boom, everything changes. It's that clash between the normal and the totally bizarre that makes these stories stick with you. Leveland, it kind of became the poster child for that. A reminder that even in the most ordinary places, the unknown can just pop in and say hello. 
And that's what this whole deep dive has been about, really. We've got witnesses who all tell the same story. We've got this electromagnetic weirdness. And we've got the authorities. Even they don't know what to make of it. It's like we're trying to solve a puzzle, but half the pieces are missing. A beauty and the frustration of it all, right? Mm. The Loveland case, it's been decades, but it's still making us ask questions, still making us look up at the sky and wonder. Mm. And maybe that's the point. Maybe it is. So what do you think? Were the Loveland lights just some freak weather event, some top secret government project, or something truly out of this world? That, my friend, is the million dollar question. The one that sticks with you even after the episode's over. And maybe, just maybe, asking that question is more important than finding the answer. Because it reminds us that there's still so much we don't know. And that's pretty amazing. It really is. There's a whole universe out there full of mysteries. And sometimes, just sometimes, those mysteries come right down to our doorstep. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the unknown. Until next time, keep looking up and keep those questions coming.